let's look at orthogonal frequency division multiplexing waveforms and understand what, why they are different from more traditional frequency division multiplexing waveforms. Well, here's a digital signal that we would send over a wireless channel. It's got a carrier frequency oscillating at the frequency that the antennas oscillate at. And for a period of time between 0 and, 10, uh, 0 and t, we're going to send either a 1 or a 0 by sending this waveform or the inverse of this waveform, the negative. And that's some digital data. Then at the next time slot, we'll send more data and so on. Well, this signal can be represented as a carrier waveform, the sine waveform at that frequency, multiplied by the rectangular function which turns the carrier on and off. And that's the multiplication. So this is a sine waveform at the carrier frequency and this is the rect function. And as we know, multiplication in the time domain is equivalent to convolution in the frequency domain. And so from a frequency domain perspective, uh, this signal occupies frequencies that are like this. It's a rect function, it's the Fourier transform of the rect, uh, which is a sync function located at the carrier frequency of the sine wave of the carrier. So we could put another signal on the same channel uh, by picking another carrier frequency, omega 2, and if we pick that far away from here, then uh, we would get most of the main lobe not interfering with these side lobes from our first carrier. But there would be some interference in here. And so we could send those two signals and this uh, at, at this separated frequency division. This is by dividing up the frequency. This is called frequency division multiplexing. Uh, and we could send those two signals and they would interfere a little bit with each other because the side lobes would keep uh, interfering and so on. Uh, now, can we be more clever than that? And that's the key to orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. We'd like to use the spectrum more efficiently. We'd like to be able to put these carriers closer together so we can fit more parallel channels, more data channels. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's uh, first of all think about uh, how signals might be orthogonal to each other. That's the O from orthogonal. So let's think about this signal here. Uh, and let's just look at one, uh, one cycle of that signal uh, and in the time domain. And what if we also had another signal which was at twice that frequency? So that means it goes through two cycles in the same time. So here I'm drawing the two cycles in the same time. Uh, this one is at omega 1 and this one is at twice omega 1. And if we pick the the two frequencies very carefully like this, whereas over here we just picked two different frequencies, but if we pick them carefully, then you can see that the uh, when we multiply these two together and add up the energy over that period of time, uh, and that's what happens in the matched filter in the digital communication system in the receiver, uh, when we multiply these two together, this is going to equal zero because the, the, you can see the components here uh, when we multiply these two together here are going to be cancelled by the negative versions of them over here. And the components here are going to be cancelled by the negative versions of them here because this is symmetric around this middle point because we've carefully chosen these frequencies. So in this case, the multiplication of S1, if this is signal 1 and this is signal 2, the multiplication of those two signals, which is what happens in the matched filter at the receiver, if you try to send signal 1 and you put it through the receiver of signal 2 for the channel 2, then you're going to get nothing coming out. because they're And that is because they're orthogonal, because we've chosen them in this way. And it turns out if we choose any integer multiple over that period, capital T, then they will be orthogonal and therefore you can send data on S1 by multiplying it by plus or minus 1 and you can send data on S2 by multiplying it by plus or minus 1 and they won't interfere because at the receiver the filter for S1 is going to pick out S1 and it's going to have zero effect from S2 and vice versa the filter for signal 2 is going to pick out S2 and it's going to have zero effect from S1 because there's this uh, multiplication that happens in the receiver and the match filter and the other waveform is going to contribute 
zero to the waveform that uh, you're decoding. And that's why they're orthogonal. And in the frequency domain, what that means is, uh, it, well, how it looks, is that you've got uh, your uh, sync functions perfectly, exactly uh, aligned with each other. So the next sync function is exactly over the top here. Uh, and these, so these two, exactly where this is at a peak, there's a zero from the next one. So this is omega one, which might be uh, two pi divided by t. And this, this would be then four pi divided by t. And of course, you can have other uh, waveforms as well, not just limited to two, you can have many of them. And that is what the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing does. It has many parallel channels, uh, all exactly aligned uh, in frequency, exactly multiples of each other in frequency, uh, so that you've got this special property that they don't interfere. Even though they are sent at the same time, across the same channel, and in the frequency domain they do overlap, but because of the careful choice of these values, you can recover them exactly at the receiver with zero effect from the other waveforms. That's the orthogonality. So don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and, uh, and like this video to uh, help uh, share the video for others to find.